Okay, guys, so the next part of chemistry is going to be getting to learn your periodic table really, really well. OK, so the first thing that I want to do for you guys is basically uh, draw some uh, important things on your periodic table for you. Um, I actually call it walking the periodic table. OK, it's just the way you can figure out which orbital comes next, especially when you're doing these orbital diagrams. And when we get into electron configurations and noble gas configurations, you'll have a better idea of what your uh, periodic table or the power of your periodic table. All right, so here is a copy of the periodic table that I gave you guys at the beginning of the semester. I'm going to blow it up a little bit just so you can see exactly what's going on. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be labeling your periodic table. So let's do that first, OK? So if we take a look, remember, we've already done all of the blocks, right? The S block, the P block, the D block, and the F block. Um, but what I want to do now is I want to just label, let's say more in depth, in more in depth labeling of all of your uh, your periodic table. So if you have, have your periodic table out in front of you, I would like you to take it out and label it with me. Uh, label it with me. It may be a good thing for you to actually print out a physical copy of the periodic table and have it with you anytime that you're in chemistry. OK, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to number my periodic table. So if I look over here where hydrogen is, I'm just going to put a one here. And then if you look at lithium, that's going to be two. Sodium, that's three. And we're just going to number on down five, six, seven. OK, so that would be the first set of numbering. Now let's go through the next set of numbering, and that's going to be for the P block. So the P block, there is no one P, so it always starts with two. So it starts with boron up here, and I'm going to label that right on the line uh, in between the P block and the D block. So we have two, three, four, five, six, and seven. OK, and then the next set of labeling that we're going to do is going to be the D block. The D block always starts with the number three. So the D block starts right up by scandium. So right where calcium is and then scandium meets it. So there I want you to label your periodic table starting with the number three. And then we go four, five, and six. OK, so now we are almost done with labeling our periodic table with numbers. The last two that we need to deal with are going to be the F block and the F block. Um, it's a slightly complicated. OK, so the F block is down at the bottom. That's the lanthanide and the actinide series. And for them, they always start with the lanthanides are labeled as four and then the actinides are labeled as five. OK, so now we are going to put some other notation in there that you guys have already seen and hopefully we will get a better idea of what's going on, right? So right here, you guys should know this as the S block. From all, all of the drawings that we did, this is the S block. All right, and then if we take a look on the other side of the periodic table, from boron around and down, this is considered the P block. Okay. One thing I do not want you to forget is uh, helium, right? Helium is chilling over here by, by itself, but actually it should be part of the S block. Okay, so just keep that in mind when you're looking at your periodic table. And then the third section that I'm going to label is going to be that infamous D block, and that is right here in the middle of the periodic table. Okay, so this right here, this is the D block. Okay, and it might be easier if I label most of these for you. So right here, this is going to be the P block. Right, and then over here, this is the S block. 
Okay, the last block that we need to label is this infamous F block, and it's down here at the bottom. So right here is going to be our F block. Okay, so that's the F block. OK, so now that we have that information, we should be able to use it to figure out this off bar situation, right? So I'm going to minimize that for just a little bit, OK? And what we're going to be doing is I'm going to show you how to walk the periodic table. So if you take a look, remember, you're always going to read the periodic table from left to right, just like you would a regular piece of paper. So you'll always start here at the top with hydrogen. OK, so you will always start right here. Now the way that I want you to look at this is the first number that you run into is the one of S block. So what you'll write on your paper when we're talking about the lowest orbitals and then going all the way up to the highest orbitals. So write your one here. OK, you know that this is the S block. OK, so. There are two elements in the S block. So if you were to read from left to right, you'd run into helium. Uh, sorry, you'd run into hydrogen. Then you'd run into helium. That is 2S2. Okay, cool. And now once you get to 2S2, you're over here on this side of the periodic table. Guess what? You're going to read it like a line of text on a piece of paper. You're going to go back to the beginning. The first number that you run into is 2 and you go through two elements in the S block. So this is the S block again, so you'll write 2S, and you run through two elements, lithium and beryllium. So they are 2S2. All right, if you keep making your way across the periodic table this way, the next number that you run into is a two, so you will write two. Now we have popped into the infamous P block. So it is 2P, and there are six elements in the first or the second P block. We have boron, which is one, carbon is two, nitrogen is three, oxygen is four, fluorine is five, neon is six. So we go through six elements when we get to the end, that's P6. Okay, great. Now we gotta start all over again. Now we're gonna start from the other side. First number we run into again is three, now we're back in this D block, so now it's 3S. The two elements that we run into are sodium and magnesium, so that is 3S2, right? Keep working your way across the block. The next number that you run into is three, so write down three. Now, if you look, we're back in that P block. We have aluminum, which is one, silicon, which is two, phosphorus is three, sulfur is four, Chlorine is five, argon is six. We go through six elements, that is 3P6. And now we're on over here on this side of the periodic table. Okay, you guys should see a pattern forming at the bottom. This looks like what Ufba told me was the lowest energy level to the highest energy level. 1S, 2S, 2P, 3S, 3P. If you check your Ufba table, you will see that that is the exact order that it goes in. Okay, so now we're going to start over again. First number that you run into is going to be four. And guess what? We're back in the S block. We have potassium and calcium. So we run into two elements in that S block, four, S, two. All right, now we don't have to go very far to run into our next number, right? The next number should be right in front of us, right at this D block. So the next number I run into is three. I'm now in the D block, and now let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six at iron, seven at cobalt, eight at nickel, nine at copper, zinc is 10, three, D, 10. Okay, the next number we run into is real close by. We have the number four here, and we're popping back into that P block. So now we have uh, P1, P2, P3, P4, P5, and then we are at element six, which would be Krypton at the end. So that is four P6. Okay, cool. And now we are on the other side of the periodic table. 
So now we start over again. And now we are at five. So the next number in sequence is going to be five. And then guess what? We're back in the S block. We hit rubidium and strontium. Two elements, five, S, two. Okay? You guys should start to see a pattern going on here. Okay? So now, if we keep walking the periodic table, the next number that we run into after 5s is 4. Okay, so now I'm going to write my 4. And guess what? We're back in the D block. Element 1 with uh, uridium, then 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We're at cadmium, which is CD. So that is four, we're in the D block. We went through 10 elements, 4D10. All right, and then guess what? We are now on, our next number that we hit is in the P block and it is a five. So I'm gonna write a five. I'm in the P block and I go through six elements. One, two, three, four, five, six, and I am at xenon. So five P6 and now I'm here. Okay, let's start over now on the other side. And now we're going to go to six. We are going to write our six. We are in the S block. We go through two elements. So we are in six, the S block. We go through two elements, six S2. The next number that we run into is going to be a five. Okay, now here's where it kind of gets interesting. This block here that is empty, what it says to you is you need to go down here. Okay, so after 6S2, we go down to the F block. So the next number that I'm going to run into is this 4. So I'm going to write 4. And then if you count, you should have 14 elements. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So it's F14. When you are done here, at the end of here, if you look at the numbers, right, that, um, what is this? Luthinium is element 71. The next element in the series is going to be 72, which means we go from the F block back around and up into the D block. Okay, so from 4, F14, we go to 5, right? Because that's the next number in the series. We're back in the D block, and now we're D, and now we're going to hit 10 more elements, so D10. And that brings us to Mercury. After Mercury, we hit the next number in the P block, which is six. We're in the P block. And then we have six elements. One, two, three, four, five, six. We are at radon. So that is six P6. Okay. And now I am here at the end of the periodic table. All right. I know things are getting a little crazy right now. Okay. Now the next step, next step we're going to go, we're going to start all over again, and we are now at 7S, right? So let me get rid of some of this stuff just so it's a little less confusing for you. Right? Okay. So now that we are at the 7S block, we are going to write down what we need. So next number we hit is 7. We're in the S block. And we hit two elements, that is francium and radium. So that is 7S2. Okay. The next number that we're going to run into, remember the same situation up top. When we get here, it says go to 89 and 103. So we're going to go here. The next number we run into is 5. So we are going to write 5. And then we have 14 elements in the F block. So it is F14. And now we are here. When we get here, the periodic table says, okay, well, what you need to do is you need to go back up to the main periodic table here. So the next number you run into is six. So you'll write six. Then we're back in 
that D block. So D, we go through 10 elements. So it's D10. The last number that we run into in the periodic table is this seven. So here we go. We hit a seven. We're back in that P block. So it's P7, uh, 7P. And then we're going to go through six more elements all the way to N to OG. So that is P6. So now if you were to take a look at your UFBAS table to tell you which orbital has the lowest energy to the highest energy, this should look familiar, okay? So the first in the series of the lowest to the highest is 1s2. The next one is 2s. The third is 2p. The fourth is 3s. The fifth is 3p. The next one is 4s. Then we move on to 3d. And then you move on to 4p. Then we are at 5s, then we are at 4d, then we're at 5p, then we're at 6s, then we're at 4f14, then the next one is 5d10 to 6p6 to 7s to 5f14 to 6d10 to 7p6. Check your table. Am I right or am I wrong? Okay, so that is what I call walking the periodic table. So hopefully that was helpful for you.